Okay, now we'll take a look at the hand, okay? The hand consists of eight bones of the wrist. We call those bones your carpals. And then we've got 14 phalanges that make up each of the digits, not each of the digits, 14 in total. And then between my phalanges and my carpals, I have a set of metacarpals, okay? So one way to remember the name of the eight carpals is to keep in mind that your carpals really are two rows of four. If I start at the thumb side here, or the pollux, I start laterally, and then I have one, two, three, four bones in the proximal row, and then I go to the distal row, and I've got one, two, three, four bones that make up the distal row. Now there's tons of way to remember the order of these bones. I kind of use the same one that I learned back when I was an undergrad, and the first letter of each word stands for something else. So I start on the lateral aspect, the proximal row, and that's my S. And I go, some lovers try positions that they can't handle. So I start laterally on the thumb side, and I take my proximal row, I go over four, I come back to the thumb, and then I go again from lateral to medial for that proximal row. So again, some lovers try positions that they can't handle. Now those words won't get you anything on the practical, so we have to learn what those first letters of each word stand for. Here's my S for some. That's my scaphoid. Okay, medial to the scaphoid. I have my lunate. Then I have what's referred to as my triclitral. And then I have my P, which is my pisiform. Okay, now I come back to the thumb, distal row. The bone that articulates on the thumb, or more properly the pollux, is your trapezium. The trapezium goes to the thumb, right? Then I go more medially. I have my trapezoid, and then I have my capitate, and then I have my hamate. Scaphoid, lunate, triquetral, pisiform, trapezium to the thumb, trapezoid, capitate, hamate. Okay? Then we go to our carpals. We name our carpals one through five. We always start with the greatest finger, the biggest finger, the thumb, or we more properly call the pollux. It's my first, second, third, fourth, and fifth carpal. And then I get to my phalanges. The thumb only has two phalanges. We have a proximal and a distal phalanx. Digits two, three, four, and five, they all have three phalanges each. I have a proximal, a middle, and a distal on digit two. Proximal, middle, distal, digit three. Proximal, middle, distal, digit four. Proximal, middle, distal, digit five, or the pinky. You should be able to tell me for the practical exactly what bone it is I'm pointing to. If I ask you to name this bone right here, you would call that the middle phalanx of digit two. If I asked you to name this bone, that would be your first metacarpal. This bone, that would be you are distal phalanx of digit five, proximal phalanx of digit four. This would be your trapezium. This would be your third metacarpal, and so forth, okay? Now, for class, you don't need to know the joint classification, but those of you that are getting into PT or OT or athletic training, you'll talk about these a little bit more specifically. The joint that I find between the metacarpal and the proximal phalanx, that joint's referred to as the MP, or metacarpal phalangeal joint. So this right here would be my fifth MP joint, okay? Easy to talk about this locations and so forth if you name the joint specifically. Then I have, between my proximal phalange and my middle, I have what's called my pip joint, proximal interphalangeal. And then between my middle phalanx and my distal, I have the dip joint, D-I-P, distal interphalangeal. So I've got my fourth dip joint, I've got my third pip joint, I've got my fourth MP joint. Now the thumb, since we only have a distal and a proximal phalanx, we can't have a pip or a dip, that's just called your IP joint, interphalangeal. So there's a quick overview of the hand and wrist.